Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. In the past several weeks, we've been talking about neuroinflammation, and today I want to talk about or summarize some of our treatment uh, methods or treatment approaches to neuroinflammation or brain inflammation. Okay, so we use something called a systems biology approach. We like to figure out what is going on with that patient, what are some of their triggers, and how do we manage these things. As a basic fundamental thing, you have to reduce stress, improve sleep, don't overtrain, eat anti-inflammatory diets, right? Uh, foods rich in vegetables, uh, high quality protein, and so forth, and good fats. So when we look at our systems approach, if you have your baseline with your dietary components and stress management and so forth, we have to ask ourselves, do we have any of this? So this BBB is a blood-brain barrier. So is our blood-brain barrier intact? This barrier prevents things that should not cross into the brain, right? Once that breaks down, it lets things or inflammatory cytokines or certain proteins can get into the brain and cause inflammation and activate what we call microglia. So brain bar uh, blood brain barrier is very important. Oftentimes what happens with this is people who have traumatic brain injury or trauma or, or a massive amount of stress can lose the blood brain barrier. And it can lead to things like leaky gut because those barriers in the gut are very similar in terms of uh, the protein makeup uh, as the blood brain barrier. Another thing is, do we have infection? we need to go down that road of figuring out if a patient has infection. You can look at things like white blood cell count and then break it down into, is it neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils? You have to figure out, is it a viral, is it bacterial, is it a pathogen or, or, or a parasite? So infection is very important. Uh, a lot of infections that affect the brain and that reoccur is sometimes viral, right? We have things like herpes simplex, we have Epstein-Barr, right? So it can create inflammatory processes, uh, especially with these types of infections. Another thing is hormone imbalance. Hormone imbalance is not just about lack of hormones. It could be excess of hormones or uh, hormones that are produced in the wrong uh, times of the day. So hormone imbalance, whether it's testosterone or estrogen, right? So I'll give you an example. If you have a, someone who is obese, right? If it's a male, what happens is your testosterones eventually convert into estrogens because of the fat tissue. If you're a female and you're obese, your estrogens will convert into testosterone, making you more male-like, right? So hair growth and so forth. So, Hormone imbalances are very important in terms of uh, sealing up that blood-brain barrier, right? And having uh, in the right hormones to process things that come in. So hormone imbalance, it could be due to menopause, it could be due to uh, menstruation, and so forth. Hypoxia. Hypoxia basically means lack of oxygen. Do we have a cause for a lack of oxygen? Do we have Raynaud's? Do we have uh, iron deficiency or megaloblastic anemias, right? Where we have B vitamin deficiencies. So you have to look at whether we have hypoxia or lack of oxygenation to the brain. Environmental toxins, you have to go down that road. Or do we work in an industry where we use more chemicals? Um, or do we live near farms where there's a lot of herbicides and pesticides, right? Commercial farms. Immune dysregulation, that goes along with autoimmune disease. Do we have immune skewing because of autoimmune disease? Do we have Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Do we have um, rheumatoid arthritis? Do we have an autoimmune disease that causes the immune dysregulation? That's very important to figure out with patients. And then finally, oxidative stress. What is putting our uh, stress burden on our body? How do we correct that? Right? It could be physical, emotional, chemical, right? It could be dietary proteins. So when we look at this systems approach, we have to fix or, or balance these things 
in order for you to manage brain fog, brain fatigue, degeneration, memory loss, and so forth. So it's very important to find a clinician who understands the systems biology approach and really tackles the underlying mechanism of why you might have neuroinflammation. It's not as simple as just taking uh, an anti-inflammatory uh, supplement like turmeric. It's not as simple as that. It may be helpful because it reduces some inflammation, but if you don't get to the cause of the inflammation, then you will never completely recover out of uh, neurodegeneration and so forth. So depending on the neurodegenerative process, um, some people can recover very quickly, but some people, it can be progressive, right? If you have a chronic disease and you're, you've um, gone through different phases and you can't recall your children's name and so forth, that's pretty far advanced. So if you can't do that, then you've almost lost that window where you can help yourself. So before it gets too bad, what you want to do is, do we have any of this? Do we have brain barrier uh, issues, infection, immune dysregulation, uh, food issues, environmental toxins, autoimmune disease? It's very important to figure that out for yourself. So in our office, we like to figure those things out and then systematically uh, unwind this, this stuff. And th that patient will start to recover as long as they keep um, um, being vigilant and being aggressive with their therapies, right? Uh, it's very important for patient participation for them to recover, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.